Hey everyone, welcome back to vMix Bootcamp, our series on how to produce a professional show with vMix. We've already uh, organized our assets. Now it's time to dive into what I think is the fun part, which is building your session. When you're producing one of these shows, you want to build your mortises, your boxes early, and you're going to want to set all that up definitely before your talent arrives. So I am going to build one box and two box in this episode. And uh, it's a pretty similar process between them. Uh, the one box is a great way to you know, get into vMix layering. So we're going to start there. And then the two box is just the next step. So the first thing I wanna do is minimize these inputs because I'm not going to use these for switching inputs. These are just uh, sources. So I'm going to right click or secondary click on the title of these, uh, get rid of anything that its only purpose is to build a box with. And now I need to create stand-in inputs. This is really important. So I'm going to create a color. I'll do green at first, because this is a Packer show, of course. So I'm gonna have to do green and yellow to start out. And I'll, I'll round it out with a few more colors. I'll go, let's go with a bear's color, which would be orange. It's a blue I, I think we're gonna use later. Orange. We'll do uh, purple for Vikings. Not, you know, not necessarily picking colors I like here, but it doesn't really matter what you pick, to be honest. It just needs to be standard. And then we'll do this uh, lion's blue. That's actually a good lion's blue there. And uh, I'm going to rename these colors to what they're standing in for. So I'm going to put this one as Aaron, our host. Corey, our other host, who's in Zoom. I'm going to do talent one. I don't know who these are going to be, right? These are going to switch depending on who uh, they're interviewing, whether it's a Packers player or uh, a Patreon. And then here I'm going to put gallery because we have a gallery view of the Zoom. I'll put that in there. Okay, so I have these boxes. Now what I want to do is, this is really important, move these to the top up here. The reason we do this is because it's good to put your camera inputs at the beginning of your show. You might input or import other PNG files. You might delete PNG files that you don't need. All of that can happen in your vMix session, but what you want to do is keep things as consistent as possible. What you don't want to do is start building shortcuts down the road or other uh, mortises down the road where your input numbers are changing. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a one box for Aaron. So I'm going to actually go here and let's do this. We're going to do uh, comps, compositions. This is going to be anything, uh, one box through a four box, maybe uh, another multi-view thing. There's a bunch of ways that you can build comps. So I'm going to add an input and I'm going to click on color and just add a black input. This does the exact same thing as clicking on the little arrow here and clicking on blank input. Either way, it's just creating a black color input. I'm going to rename this Aaron one box. Close this. Now, go to the input settings, layers, multi-view, and I want to put Aaron on input two. I like to do two because it allows us to put something behind him if we ever need to. And it's important that we are consistent throughout building all of our boxes. The reason being, it's a little bit of a relic of using merge transitions in vMix, which transitions in vMix, excuse me. We're going to cover that in a bonus episode later of using merge transitions. Uh, once you use certain transitions like that in vMix, it's important that your layers stay the same. So if Aaron is number two in this one box, he should be number two in a four box down the line. Cool, so Aaron is there on number two. And similarly, I don't wanna go on number 10 just in case I need to put something like, I don't know, a ticker above, but I'm going to click on one box.png and you can see it puts the frame around it. I'm going to go to Aaron here and zoom out so I don't lose the whole thing there. There we go. And now what I wanna do is I wanna pan this up with the, with the Y pan and zoom in a little bit. And you can see that this, this box is not a perfect 16 by nine frame. And by the way, if you wanna make this bigger, you can just click and drag and it'll make this preview window bigger. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is cut off some of my uh, Y uh, axis here. 
I don't want to cut off too much on the top. I probably want to cut more off the bottom. So I'm actually going to pan this down just a little bit here. So it's like right there and then zoom in and we're going to fill this out. And it's really important that we are consistent. So I need to fill that out. There we go. All the way there. And by using the arrow keys, the up down arrow keys, you can get really precise uh, input on any parameter here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to use this later, and I'm just going to remember that the pen is 0.045. I'm going to use that later. Now, what I want to do is build another one box this time for Corey. There are two ways to do this. One is to create a virtual input on a one box you've already created. This is actually going to work well for the demonstration I'm doing throughout this series because later on, we are going to actually use a separate audio source for our program audio. However, if you are doing an all in the box solution here, where you're using vMix for your auto, auto mixing uh, audio and for your graphics, right? You're doing everything in one. Try to avoid virtual inputs because they don't auto mix audio the same way. So I'm going to not create a virtual input for now. I'm going to just add an input and I'll add a blank one. I'm going to go to Layers Multi View, and I'm going to do the same thing. This can stay the same. This is going to be one box.png. Corey, however, is going to be the input here. You can see it already did 0.94. Oh, there we go. This is a this is a bug. I think I'm going to click on one there. There we go. Now everything should follow, and it does. Very good. Sometimes if your zoom, your overall zoom decouples from your zoom X and zoom Y, it can create problems. So just reset everything to one and redo it. So I know that I copied this, so I'm gonna paste that in. And then my pan Y was 0 0.045. Excellent, so we have created a Cory one box and an Aaron one box. We might create more down the road, but for now, that's going to be good. For this demonstration. Now I'm going to do a two box. It's almost the exact same thing. Add a blank input here. I'm going to go to color, go to the settings and do two box Aaron Corey. There we go. Layers multi view. I'm going to select the two box right here. And you can see here, I actually didn't capture this on video. I renamed one of our two boxes, two box pip, because right here, there's actually a, a cutout. It's really hard to see because of the background being black. And this is a pip, not a two box, as we might call it. A pip is a uh, bigger source and then a smaller source. It's a picture in picture. I'm going to do two box.png here. Okay, so Aaron was on layer two. I'm going to edit this. For zoom, I want it to be the same, 0.954. For pan Y, I also want it to be the same. The reason why this needs to be the same is because if you're cutting from a one box with Aaron and a two box with Aaron and Corey, I don't want Aaron's eye line to change. Now, just like the one box, once Aaron actually sits down and is looking at the camera, I might go in and change the Y pan so that his eye line ends on the third, uh, which is you know about right here. That's just best practice for framing anyone, right? But I want to at least make it consistent when I'm setting up so that in the chance that I do just get lucky and we pan the camera and hey, he's on the third, cool. It's consistent across my entire uh, project. So I'm going to do that. What I need to do to get Aaron over here into this box is I need to pan the X axis to point 0 0.05, but I specifically needed it to be negative 0 0.5. Vmix does panning and zooming on a one based decimal system. So 0.5 is halfway across the screen. Negative 0.5 is halfway across the left. 0.5 is halfway across the screen to the right. If I'm doing that on the Y pan axis, 0.5 is gonna be halfway up and negative 0.5 is gonna be halfway down. Okay. Now what I need to do is crop. And the way that you calculate cropping is pretty simple. I'm gonna to go to my calculator here and I want to take 1920, which is my X axis. That's the, all the pixels in this frame. And I want to divide it by four. It's important that your session's in 1920 by 1080 here. It's very important that you do that, which you can briefly do over here in settings and you can change your uh, display size here. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my settings here. 
go to my layers, click edit on Aaron's layer. I'm gonna go back to my calculator, 1920, and I'm going to divide this by four, and that's 480. So I wanna crop my X by 480. The reason I'm doing four is because I need Aaron now to take up half the distance, or half the X axis that he was before. And what that means is I need to take a quarter off of either side of him. And then a 1920 minus 480 is 1440. Very good, and there you go. Now you can see, now it's, uh, he's panned all the way over. Uh, he's not going into this box, so we're in good shape there. Now I'm going to go back to my multi-view and do Corey. And you can see once I click that, it covered everything up. That's because we haven't edited this layer yet. For zoom, I'm going to do the same thing that I've been copy and pasting. 0 0.045, oh, excuse me, 0 0.045 for my Y axis. And then for this, it's going to be 0 0.5 because we're going in the positive direction for the Y. Cropping is gonna be the same, 480 by 1440. And um, you might also be asking, why does it matter if I am cropping you know, off to the right, it's off the screen? Well, the reason why is because you wanna be able to nudge people. It's just best practice to uh, you know, crop them in the proper way so that if you need to swap people later, uh, your cropping follows your input layer. Cool, so now I have created a two box with Aaron and Corey. Now, I'm gonna do the virtual input route for this. I wanna create another two box. I'm going to do Aaron and one of the other talent who's joining. So I'm gonna create a virtual input. You'll see it goes virtual dash two box. The virtual part is never going to go away. It's reminding you, this is a virtual input. The audio is not going to follow video. If I do this two box, I'm gonna do Aaron talent one. Excellent, and all I need to do here is go into my layers, click on Corey, and rather than Corey, I'm gonna select talent one, and that is now selected there. So that is how you create one boxes and two boxes. Next time on VMix Bootcamp, we're gonna do three boxes and four boxes. It's basically the same, but there are a few extra steps along the way. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.